We are starting section 3 of chapter 6, which is fractions and decimals on the number line. So please go ahead and write this title down in your notebook. You do not need to copy down the, the graph down below, but that just shows you how we can graph fractions and decimals on the number line. So remember when you're watching the video, you can pause when you need to. You can rewind something if you need to hear it again. And when you're ready to move on, you can hit play. Also, if you have questions along the way, you can write those down in the side of your notebook so that we can go over those tomorrow during class. So what are fractions and decimals in on the number line? So here I have a number line starting at 0 and going to 1. So remember, we're not writing this down. We're just watching. We'll have some examples later that you're going to write down. So I can divide my number line from 0 to 1 by 0.1, so I have 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, so I can graph something like 0.5 on my number line by breaking it up into smaller bits. I also know that I can do fractions because I know 1 tenth is the same as 0.1. 2 tenths is 0.2. So I can also divide my number line into smaller bits. So we're going to practice some of these with the next couple examples. So go ahead and copy this down. This is example one. We're going to graph each fraction or decimal and its opposite. So remember again, if you need to, pause the video and move on when you're ready to move on. So you might want to pause right now, copy all this down, leave space to write, and then you can listen as we go on. So I'm going to graph each fraction. So I want to graph one and a third. So I'm going to place zero in the middle because I also need to graph the opposite. So I need to break my bits into one-thirds. So I know if I have one-third, I have one-third, then I have two-thirds, and then I have the number one, which is the same as three-thirds. I can graph, break this into, again, one and a third, one and two-thirds, and then my next line would be two. So I've broken that into thirds. So I can do the same this way. This would be negative one-third, negative two-thirds, sorry about my handwriting, it's hard with this stylus, and then negative one, negative one-third, and negative two-thirds, and then this would be negative two. So I'm going to graph, so I'll use a different color because it's getting kind of messy. So we'll use red. So I'm going to graph one and a third, so here's my one and a third. And then I want negative 1 and a third, which is down here, so I can graph those. Okay, well, what if I have something like 0.7? So I'm only going to graph 0.7. I'm not going to have room on mine to do the opposite. So I'm going to make this 0, and then I can make this 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on, all the way up. to the number 1. So if I want to graph 0 0.7, again, I'm going to use a different color so that you can see that. I'm going to graph there at 0 0.7. I could do the same going the negative direction, and you would see that at negative 0 0.7. So again, copy this down into your notes. If you need to pause, go ahead and pause the video. When you're ready to move on, hit play. Okay, so now in your notebook, you're going to graph these and their opposites and you're going to use the horizontal line and you're going to graph two and a half and it's opposite. So there is no text box on the right because you can't really put that in the text box. But I should be able to look at your notebooks tomorrow and see that you've graphed all four of these on separate graphs. Okay, so how we just graphed decimals, we can also do that with fractions. So we're going to graph some fractions. So we're going to just look at negatives here. So I'm going to put my 0. And I have these both as 5 eighths and 3 eighths. So I can divide all of these into eighths. So I have 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths. And remember, these are all negatives. Whoopsie. 4 eighths. 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, and 8 out of 8 would be a negative 1. Okay, so again, I'm going to use a different color so that you can see. I'm going to compare negative 5 eighths 
So here's my negative 5 eighths and negative 3 eighths. And then when I'm comparing them, remember, I can use my greater than and my less than signs. So I want to graph them, and then I want to compare. So I know that negative 5 eighths is less than, because it's to the left, um, of negative 3 eighths. So I know that negative 5 eighths is less than negative 3 eighths. Okay, so now I want to compare 2 and 2 thirds and 3 and 1 third. So again, I'm going to start negatives, but I'm going to start at negative 2. So these are my thirds, so I can do um, a third, two thirds, three, and a third. And I'm just going to stop there. I'm going to add all my negatives. Well, let's go all the way to three, to four. So I have negative four as my big number. So I want to compare these two numbers. So I've made my number line. So I'm going to put a dot on negative two and two thirds, which is here. It's 2 and 2 thirds, and then I want to compare that to 3 and 1 third, which is right here, so I know this one is more to the left. So again, I'm going to use my greater than, less than sign, and I'm going to start with the number. So negative 2 and 2 thirds. So 2 and 2 thirds was actually to the right. So that one is a bigger number than negative 3 and 1 third. So I find by using the number line, I can easily see the answer. So now we're just going to compare some more numbers. And if you can't see how they're different, go ahead and draw the number line. So I want to compare 0.3 and negative 1.2. To me, this one's kind of easy because I have the negative, so I know that's got to be smaller than the 0.3, and I point at the smaller number. So if you're having trouble with these, you can also look in your textbook on page 263. So this is page 263. I use different examples than what they have in the textbook. So if you need another example, go ahead and look in the book to see what other examples they have. Okay, now I'm also going to compare negative 5.46 and negative 5.50. And maybe I cannot see how those are different. So I'm going to draw my number line, and I have negative 5, and then I have negative 6. So I know 0.46 would be here, and I know 0 0.50 would be here. So I know that the 0.46 is actually closer to 0 to the right, so that's a bigger number. So negative 5.46 is a bigger number than negative 5.50. So I have to draw the number line to sometimes see how these are different. So again, remember, if you need to pause a video, pause the video. If you need to rewind, you can rewind. So remember, for some of these, you can also look in your book because the examples are different than what I'm using in the lecture. So now you can do these on your own. You should see a text box on your right because we're just inserting the greater than or less than sign. So you're going to use these to answer these questions. And again, if you can't see the difference, please draw a graph, a horizontal graph number line in your notebook so that you can see the difference. When you're ready to move on, go ahead and put play and we'll do some more practice problems. Okay, so now we have a word problem because you know we always have to have word problems. So a Chinook wind is a warm mountain wind that can cause rapid temperature changes. The table shows, or actually my number is right here, show three of the greatest temperature drops ever recorded. Which of the following shows the greatest change? Explain with the number line. So one problem here is we don't have common denominators for all of these. Some of them we have 8, the other one we have a 4. So I need to change my negative 1 and 3 fourths to make it out of 8. So how do I make the bottom 8? Well, if I multiply times 2, that's out of 8. So whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I get 6 eighths. So this one I can rewrite as negative 1 and 6 eighths. So now I can compare these. I can say that this is my negative 1, and I have it divided into eighths. So I have, again, the 1 eighth, 2 eighth, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 
eighths and eight eighths would be two negative. So I need to put all my little negatives on there. I'm going to use a different color again so that you can see. I'm going to put my dots. I have negative one and six eighths. So here's negative one. Six eighths is right there. I have negative one and seven eighths. It's right there. And I have five eighths. Okay, it says which of these is the greatest change? So, which is my greatest number? Negative 1.5 eighths would be my greatest change in temperature. So we're actually going to reevaluate that for a second, right? Because if I want to look at the greatest change in temperature, I want to see which one is the greatest number from zero. So is negative 5 eighths, even though it's my greatest number, is it the greatest change? I want to know the greatest change. So I need to carefully read my questions. So that is not my greatest change. My greatest change is going to be the greatest distance from zero which will be the negative 1 and 7 eighths. So the greatest change is negative 1 and 7 eighths because I want to look at change. Yes, negative 1 and 5 eighths is my largest number, but that's not the biggest change. I want to look to see how far from 0 I can get. Okay, so write this question down in your notebook. So you have an oceanographer, and they're sending a remotely operated vehicle into the deep sea. So this one might be a little bit easier to imagine. Right, so if I have the surface of my water, I'm sending my ROV down. So the first mission sends it to negative 2 and 3 fourth fathoms. The second to the negative 2 and 5 eighths. And the third is to negative 2 and 4 fifths. So again, you have to get common denominator somehow here that you can break it up. And then um, it's going to be hard to graph this on a number line, but you can maybe put it in perspective to see which is the greatest number. So I did give you some tricky numbers. If you have a hard time, we can go over this one tomorrow. But just go ahead and try it. So you want to look for your common denominator between 4, 8, and 5. If you have problems, like I said, at least I should see that you've tried it. So I should see some work in your notebook. If you can come up with an answer, great. Put it on the text box on the right. Okay, so the last slide, what questions, what things do you still need help with? Um, is it, can you figure out which is the, um, the greatest number? Can you figure out which one has the greatest change? So remember, greatest change, so when we're looking at the greatest change, we want to see how far, how far from zero we are. So that's looking at the greatest change, but not at the largest number. So make sure you read your questions carefully, and I'll see you tomorrow.